Um, it's like a normal father, you know, it's just that fella is a bit weird, you know, like normal things you, you won't expect a father to do or say to you is what fella will, you know, like say to you, like, you might be looking at a girl, fella will go and stop the girl that my son likes you, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, um, when you, for, for fella, it wasn't a conventional kind of life. Not the normal, like it was agitation today. You know, I'm talking about when Fela really became the Fela the activist. Times with um, um, education to release um, the government, the harassment here and there. How do you feel as a child then, and seeing your father being whisked away in his vans and stuff? How do you feel? How well, did you feel? At first, you know, when I was young. Um, it was strange to me, you know, seeing police come to Kalakota like every every other weekend. You know, so we know they are coming this weekend. <laughs> Everybody's like ready for them and they come kick everybody's ass. You know, just for speaking the truth and, you know, and um, as a new son, we should expect they are coming. So we got used to it. I personally got used to, you know, police coming to Kalakota every day because when they are coming, the first thing that they are shooting tear gas into Kalakota, so we know they are here. <laughs> it, it wasn't new again. Mm. And we also read, you know, that uh, legendary fella is very uh, friendly with women. You know? When in the house, you have like ten women in the house taking roles you know, to take care of the dad. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel? Do you feel like man, this is my father, Sha? That, that's why he called himself Abba me now, you know, it's, you, do, you don't find people do that stuff like that, you know, you have to be a strange person to have women with you. You know, Fela um, got married to 27 women, but he had more than 27 women around him. <laughs> so, you know, so that makes him a strange being, you know, to deal with all that individual Stress, you know, we may you people come with too, too many wahalas. I mean, I agree with you. Okay? Yeah, so <laughs> we have to deal with 27 plus. Wow. Must have been a lot. And did you pick some of this trait? Ah, what trait? <laughs> I mean, which of the traits of Fela do you see today? This is what I pick from dad. This is the way dad does things. One, one thing I'll say I, I really pick from him is um, Fela is a no-nonsense guy. He doesn't take um, nonsense from anybody. If he's asking you to do something, you have to do it 101% right. So, you know, so I, I think I really pick that from him. So, uh, can, you, can you just share with us some of the unforgettable moments with Fela? Unforgettable moments with him? I know you have a lot. Plenty. Okay, um, we were on tour in Italy and um, and he was arrested for marijuana trafficking, which was a setup. It wasn't fellas doing, it was a setup. So at the hotel when when the um, the police people came for him and we were like, okay, we've come to our... Actually, he was sleeping the morning when they came. We had, he was sleeping one of his 27. He had one of them in his room. So they came, I want fella, I want fella. We showed them fella's room, and they banged the door open. Yeah, are under arrest, like, under arrest. I don't walk to the police station. I arrest me, I was <laughs> carrying me. <laughs> and I was like, half naked, you know. So, we have to, I'm not following you. Call Nigerian house. I don't walk to the police station. Police come and kick my ass and <laughs> so I thought he was joking and he was serious when they got there I just wrapped him up with his bed sheet you know like okay I have to carry him to the station <laughs> so I was there looking at that so I, I, I didn't forget that and you know as a child you have that kind of dad who's always in the news you, you have to go to school and then contend with your friends in school your colleagues how were you able to relate with other kids was 
Um, with me when I was in secondary school, I had one or two issues, but primary school, I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't remember all that. When I was in secondary school, I was a bit older, and um, being a I had a lot of friends. Oh. And, pe and people look at me like different, you know. There, there, there's always meaning to everything I do. <laughs> so I have precautions to things I do as well, you know. And if I had like a misunderstanding with um, a schoolmate or something, yeah, I'm a felon, you know, that tag on you. So with time, I got used to it. Like, Remember properly, it was him. Um, it was after I criticized first stack, you know. If I'm not mistaken, you know, I think it's after I criticized first stack that it was just waste of funds and the government at that time didn't have a direction, no idea of what they were doing, you know. I think that was when he started having problems with the government and. What led to the burning of, of Kalakuta was just a minor traffic offense that would just be take, taken care of. But, you know, because of that um, beef, I would say, that has been on ground, you know. So, but what, what, what they did wrong was burning Kalakuta and killing his mother. That made him stronger. Like, okay, if you can do this much damage, yeah, then I won't stop saying the truth and, you know, putting down my songs to let my people know um, the bad things you people are doing, like authorities stealing, injustice, etc. Were you always in the um, Kalakuta Republic? Yeah. What Kalakuta represents to me? Ah. I don't know. <laughs> it's just my house. <laughs> you, know, you know, people's houses, for me, for me. Yeah, it's, you know, like Village like to say, it's a republic in a republic. He created his own republic. Uh, people find it real strange that uh, you know, people have total liberty here. You know, so that's strange to a lot of people when they when they come here. Ah, look at people smoking weed, living a free life. You know, nothing to worry about. You know. So we can we can say that um, for many, uh, for you, represent liberty. Yeah, Liberty and um, um, was a school of thought as well. And I, I saw a lot of people like learn music here, you know, and they become professionals. So what, what I would say again, I, I think the government should thank Fela a lot because Kalakuta, Fela brought a lot of people off the streets to Kalakuta and gave them a life, you know, gave them like a second chance in life, you know, which I do, I've never seen the Nigerian government do that. You know, they don't give people second chances in this town, you know, so I think they should thank Fela for doing that. We are loads and loads of people here that Fela transformed their lives. Was there a difference between the Fela on the stage and the Fela lounge? Fela on the stage is Fela in an artistic way, musically and you know, whatever else you do. Fella in the house is a father, a caring father. Like when we run into his room, he finds chocolates, um, cake, he, he, has, he, has, he loves um, sponge cakes and ice cream. So that's why I really go to his room. <laughs> cake and ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's, just, let's, let's wrap it up with this. Today is the um, 20th anniversary of the legendary Fella. What would you say uh, has been able to sustain the Fela I mean, 20 years is a lot. It's 
simple. Where, when you say the truth, people will always remember you. And when you fight for the people, the less privileged. You know, that's history. You can't go. And you created a unique form of music as well that people still relate to. And it's like a prophet. Everything he has um, talked, sing about, sang about, come on. Up this 20, 20, 2017, right? He sang about what had no light like 30 years ago. We don't have light. We're on generator right now. So how can you forget someone that sees the future? There must be some financial engagement, other resources. That you, how do you manage to still keep everywhere military? It's a museum now. So um, it, the museum generates funds for itself to keep this going. And we have staff that we have to pay as well. Central.